painting friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof, and in the spirit of Valentine's Day coming up soon, I created this painting tutorial for you guys. This is going to be a two-part painting tutorial. In part one, we're going to focus on sketching out the concept and painting in the Beagle Puppy, and then in part two, we're going to work on painting the flowers and the basket. While I have you guys here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fun painting tutorials like this one. All right, let's dive into our materials and get started with this tutorial. We have acrylic paints. I'm using heavy body golden brand acrylic paints for the most part. A couple other brands are mixed in there, uh, but you're welcome to use whatever brand of paint works best for you. For our colors today, we have phthalo green, Terra Verte, Cadmium Yellow Light, Light Ultramarine Blue, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Doxazane Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Quad, it's this, the Quad Magenta color here, and this is Primary Magenta, so this Quad Magenta is just a, a deeper, cooler, more purple type of magenta, and this is a little bit warmer. We also have Light Magenta, which is just like a lighter, pinkish version of this magenta. We have ivory black, yellow ochre, titanium white. We have burnt sienna, burnt umber, and Naples yellow. I'm using a disposable palette, paper palette today. I have a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas panel. I have a cup of water to clean off my brushes. We have a tape measure for using the grid method. If you don't wanna use the grid method and you just wanna eyeball the whole thing, you're welcome to do that. I think it makes it a little bit easier if you use the grid method, which I'm going to explain shortly. I also have a paper towel for drying my brushes and I have four paint brushes I'm going to be primarily using today. Uh, we have a Filbert brush, this is about a three quarter inch filbert brush. We have an angled brush, about a half inch, maybe a little smaller. Uh, we have this number six flat tip brush right here. And this is a number two round brush. All right, let's get started on this painting tutorial. First, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water, dab the excess water off a little bit. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, just make like a neutral grayish brown color. And I'm going to take my measuring tape. Since this is a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas, we are going to put a tick mark every four inches and that will give us what we need. So I'm gonna start with the top. We got four, eight, 12. And at the bottom, four, eight, 12. Same thing on these two sides, four, eight. And again, let's get the paint out of the way. We've got four and eight. Then we go right here. Four, eight, twelve, four, eight, and twelve. So now I've got a little grid here. If you want to draw the whole lines to make it even easier, you can. I just I recommend thinning down your paint or using a pencil if you're gonna do that just so that it's uh, not visible under your acrylic paint later. You wanna cover that up completely so people can't tell that you put a grid down. I have the same grid on my reference photo. I will have a screenshot of that available for you right here. You can screenshot this and print it out uh, if you wanna reference and also create this on a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas. So I'm gonna keep using this number two round brush and start sketching out the concept. Now that I have this grid on here, I can look at the grid on my canvas and look at the grid on my reference photo and see where my lines and shapes will go. So I'm just mixing brown and blue and black here just to get like a darker color that's easy for you guys to see where I'm sketching everything. So I'm gonna start with the wicker basket. So the basket is, the handle is about right here 
There's a little knob there, comes down to about there. So here's center in this box and it's still above that. These ones go that way. And then right around here, we've got the basket, which comes to about center of this square right here. And then it comes down at an angle like that. And we're gonna lose the corner, bottom corner of it. There's gonna be a little rose there. And there's a rose here, but just to give you an idea, that's about where it's gonna be. And then we're gonna have the beagles shape about here. His ear comes like that. And his body, this little bump of his back there. And his little, actually his belly kind of comes down like this. Okay, going back to the basket, we have this part of the basket handle. This kind of comes up out of here. And these are like twisted. And it comes back down out here. It's a little bit more narrow back here because this is a little bit closer to the viewer. Okay, and it's still spun like that. Next, I'm gonna sketch in my roses. I'm gonna mix a little magenta in here, quad magenta. And we've got this rose right here. And I'm not trying to perfectly, accurately get these petals in here. I'm just making some loops and in general, getting the rose petal shape. And we've got a little leaf there little leaf right there. Got another one. It's about here, this shape, a little bit smaller. And there's one up here. It's touching, resting on this one. And it comes up, so here's like halfway. Comes a little bit farther past halfway there. And 
we've got lots of little leaves right here. And I'm just gonna put I'm gonna put a little bit of one here even though I don't have that in my reference photo just because I want them to go fill up the whole basket. And we've got another one down here, which this is the top of this square, and this one does not go past the top. It's kind of hanging over. Got a little stem right there. I'm making the stems like kind of more jagged just so that I, because it's all the same color right now, so making these more jagged helps me realize that those are uh, stems and leaves instead of petals. And there's another one about here. And two more. This one right here that kind of goes a little bit over this grid line there. And one more up here. Okay, and a few more stems right there, right there, and right there. Okay, we've got our roses in the baskets. Let's get back to the beagle. Now I'm just mixing brown and blue together so I have a different color for the beagle than I did for that. That just helps me to separate things a little more when I'm sketching out the concept. Okay, so Beagle's face, let's work on that first. His eye, his right eye is, let's see, here's halfway between this box here. It, the top of his eye is still below that and it's about this big, so it's a nice oval shape. and a little bit of, it's like an oval, and then you got two pinched edges there. And the back one is just a little bit higher up than the front. He's got a nice little white line there, and he's got a little twinkle in his eye, and there's a little bit of brown in there too. So I'm just uh, using less pressure with the brush to get those tinier little details in there. And he's got little eyebrows. Let's see, let's go for the nose next. Just block that in here. So the nose here is this one and this one here's center from this spot here. So I'm measuring that out. The side of his face actually goes about right through center. And it comes down about this much. And it comes over like that. <clears throat> so now let's get 
His nose is pretty close there. And the shape is just a like 50 degree angle down and a little flat part at the bottom and then like a 40 to a 60 degree angle there. And he's just got a little softer ridge at the top. That's a little bit too big. I'm just gonna put that back. And those little things. And then he's got this little white part of his snout. comes up and this one comes up at a little angle and we've got steeper angle and right at the point where that two eyes go these actually his eyes are a little slight angle these meet up and Come up there. And the next eye is right here. It's a little smaller. And it's at a little bit of a different angle. And then he's got the top of his head. It's pretty close to the top here. And just keep an eye on your angles. So this is a slight angle. And we've got the side of his face about there. This one's a little steeper angle. His ear comes right down there. And that matches up with where I had the ear before. One. I think this eye is a little too far to the right. I'm going to double check that in a minute. Uh, but coming back, let's get his other ear comes down like this. It's a little too close. There we go. And the ears should be about the same. Maybe this one like a little bit lower because of the slight angle of the face. And about center. It does not quite go to center, but it's pretty close. Okay, so checking the features in the face here, let's look at our reference photo. So the eye should be about halfway. And it's pretty close there. Okay, now looking at distance between the eyes. All right, the snout and the eyes should be about the same. The um, width of the mouth part should be about the same as the eyes. I think I might just move this one in just a little bit. Might also be the way I put that. I've got a little bit of a mouth shape here. And then let's get some patterns in his coat and his arm starts Let's see here's our square here's center this 
arm starts a little bit over here. Basically comes down at just a slight angle until you get to where this leg is. And then just a little bit farther down from that, we've got a bend for his elbow. And when you get to about where the belly ends, then we've got a little change and we've got his front paw and the front paw comes to about this line. Let's get this angle here. Goes to about just a little bit. This is like his little joint. So there's a little change there. And I'm just putting in his little paw. Got a little pattern here. He's got a little white belly and darker patterns on his legs. There's all this stuff. Okay, coming over here. We've got right here where the ear, before the ear comes back up, we've got a little spot for the chest and then it comes out just a bit about right there for this paw always oh, starting to look really cute <laughs> this comes down and this paw is pretty close to the other one but they're not touching This one comes about right there. And it's just kind of dark down here. He's got another foot in the back that you can't see too much of. And you can't really see his tail either. But that is our beagle. Got a little bit of a spot there. Okay. and. As I'm painting in the beagle with the colors, you're welcome to change the colors and the you know patterns on his face and body if you have a beagle and you want it to look more like your beagle. <laughs> um, next, I'm just gonna paint in, sketch in where the roses on the bottom are gonna go. So I'm gonna have one rose right here. I just mixed in green and purple there. You don't have to do that. I was just using a different color. Got a leaf there, a leaf there, and then we've got its nice stem. I'm actually gonna put it like that. And we've got a bigger leaf there. And then we've got another little one I'm gonna put right here. It's just a cute little bud. And I'm gonna put another little leaf there. Next, we just gotta get a wall in the background to help separate ground from wall. 
and I'm gonna make this have a little bit of an angle. Uh, there's a pattern in here, which I don't want to get too much into now because I'm gonna be painting that over. Uh, but you know, it's a wicker basket pattern, and then um, I think I'm gonna keep the background pretty simple and focus our details more on this. So now we've got the concept sketched and the next step is to start painting in the background. All right, to paint in the background, I'm gonna start with my larger filbert brush. I'm gonna take brown and ultramarine and light ultramarine and some burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna start filling in everything back here. I'm gonna put in a little bit of terra verde too. A little more white, brown, black. You can make the background any color that you'd like. Maybe I'll do a little bit of phthalo green actually in the background with more brown. Just so that the uh, colors of the beagle are definitely not going to match the colors of the background. So make it a little more green. So you just take your brush and fill in all of the spaces around your sketch and go right up to the borders. Don't wanna leave any white space. Just mix in a little more green there. And don't forget when you paint with acrylics, it dries darker than what it looks like when it's wet and first applied to your canvas. So if you think about that, you're uh, Colors should be a little bit lighter, just a little bit lighter than what you want to put down just because when it dries, it'll look like what you want. Just going back and forth with the paintbrush to fill in this background. 
uh, using a medium amount of pressure. If you press really hard, well that part's dry. If you press really hard, you might end up scraping some of the paint or leaving streak marks. Um, by pressing with a little bit less pressure, you get a little better coverage, I think. And if you press too light, then you're probably going to be here for a while <laughs> painting in the background. Uh, I'm going to take some Naples yellow now on my brush and start at the top. And I just want to have like a lighter top part and then have it kind of streaky out of focus coming down. Doing like crisscross patterns, up and down patterns. Just to give it like a little bit more texture, look a little bit less flat in the background. And the um, first color I put down is getting a little tacky now on this side. It's not perfectly dry yet. And that's really nice for creating this effect. Liking that so far. Next, let's get the little cobblestone bottom here. So I'm mixing purple with my burnt sienna and a little bit of burnt umber. And just covering up. Let's put this up here. Covering up the bottom. Just fuzzing this out a little bit so it's a little bit less of a focus spot. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just soften that up by just blending over it. I'm going to take a little more black and umber and ultramarine right around the puppy, under the puppy, right under the basket and under this flower just to help give a little bit of shadow and make these things look like they're actually sitting here and not just floating. I'm going to put, do a little bit of ochre, magenta, a little light magenta going in there, and just going to go back and forth with the brush just to lighten things up a little, give us a little more range. 
a value down here. Okay. Gonna also work on this wicker basket real quick. I wanna start with the darker colors and then we're gonna layer over it. So I'm taking blue and brown and cadmium yellow deep. And I'm just gonna go like this over this area just to get a little coverage. Maybe a little more ochre. And it looks a little streaky right now because it's a little bit on the transparent side, but that's okay because we're going to be layering over this quite a bit. Takes just some black mixed in there. It's darker over there behind the puppy. Okay. And a little bit of maples. Gonna get the brush wet a little, thin the paint down so I can still see my lines under there. Okay. I'm gonna put that brush back in the water. I think I'm gonna work on the puppy first and then we'll go to the roses and then we'll do the basket. So while we're working on the puppy, I'm gonna use this number six flat tip brush to get started. And then for the details, I'm gonna use the number two round brush. So again, like I said before, you can make this beagle puppy whatever color combination you'd like. I'm gonna start by mixing some black with some burnt umber and white. And that's a good starting color for his head. I'm gonna mix a little Naples in there just to lighten it up. Help it to separate from the background a little more. A little bit of black and purple and green or phthalo green and some burnt sienna. Just help to darken this a little. And if you take your brush and just make little brush strokes like this, it can help to look like there's some texture. I think he's got some hair. And he's got a little darker section under the eyes too. It's really cute. All right, and this ear is going to have more purple and burnt umber. And I'm going to mix some burnt sienna with white into this ear too. A little bit of ochre and white and some magenta. Magenta and cad yellow deep. A little bit of white. And we've got a lot of this color. I'm gonna add a little burnt sienna to that too. All right, in this area. I'm gonna do more 
ochre and white right here. And kind of blend that a little bit into the darker spot. And more white. Some Naples and magenta. Just a tiny dab of magenta. And I'm pressing very gently here just to let it blend a little more. Building up the shadows a bit more too. Taking just some sienna for the eyebrows, just a little bit darker, deeper brown right at the base. I just mix a little bit of umber in there too, but at the base of the eyebrows. And let's go with our lighter color right there. I'm gonna get a little bit more yellow and magenta and white and build up these little highlights again. Okay, mixing white with that brownish color I had before, that's gonna go right down here. A little bit of blue, it's kind of dark. And we'll go back to brown right under the nose and go back to our sienna with some umber and I'm going to take some naples for this spot here Some purple. And back to our Naples and yellow and magenta color. Some ochre. And get some white. Just gonna touch that up over here too. The little parts where the ear kind of turn. I'm gonna wipe down my brush, get some black and some umber and purple, just so I can get the other side of that and our sienna here
Okay, now I'm gonna switch to my smaller brush, my number two round brush. And I'm gonna take white with a little bit of my light ultramarine blue, a little bit of my Naples, and a tiny little bit of my magenta. And we're just gonna start with this right over here. So it's not perfectly bright white. You can mix a tiny little bit of black in there too, or brown, just to get a little more shadow. And I'm just blending this white kind of gets lost. So I bl blended a little bit of my, my brown and blackish colors together. <laughs> and they've got a little bit more of this white right here where his mouth is. He looks sad. <laughs> and then we'll put this here, just blend this in together. Go back to the little lighter value white we had. Uh, let's mix a little bit of Naples and white together here. It's a little bit brighter and I want these to kind of not be a perfect line but kind of fuzz into that lighter color, that uh, brownish color. Alright, going back and getting a little bit of brown in my brush. Just blending it softly. Got a little bit of a blend here. There's a little bit of purple right there. And let's paint in the nose while we're at it. We'll take some black, some purple. And I'm just gonna get the shape in here for now. A little bit more black. I'm going to take a little bit of brown, continue this down here, and give us a little mouth. Okay, I'm gonna take some pure black for his little nostrils. And then we're gonna mix our white with a little bit of purple, black, and create this gray color for the top part. You can mix in even more white and purple and a little bit of light ultramarine blue. Nice little highlight there. And you also, with that same color, maybe a little lighter even, we've got a highlight under the little nostril where it's wet. And a little bit there, a little bit under that nostril. And a little bit of a highlight right there. Okay, it's a cute looking nose. And I'm just gonna clean that off my brush. Go back to the white with a little bit of the Naples and pink and blue mixed in and go back up here. And this starts to blend in with our browns again. So I'm just mixing that on the palette and very gently pressing to get this 
to turn into that cute little white strip that a lot of beagles have. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna layer up with some highlights after. First, I guess I do wanna fix this little spot right here, just make this come up a little bit more. And take a little more white right here. Okay. Very good. I'm also gonna blend this a little bit just to keep that a little softer. I think I'm also realizing that the left side of the face is just a little too long. So we're going to carry that over. Okay. All right, now for the eyes, I'm going to start with the black, with a little bit of brown. And we're going to do this one first. It's gonna look a little creepy right now because I'm just putting in the black first and then we're gonna put in the whites and it's gonna look cuter. And the shape of the eye is probably the most important thing because that's how we read if it's accurate looking or not. And I think I did make mine a little too big. So I'm gonna make that a little smaller by just putting some of my other colors here. better okay and now we're gonna give him some life <laughs> in his eyes so I got my white with like a little bit of that blue in there I'm just gonna take very gently line the bottom of the eye and if you want to wait until the black is all dry that might help He's looking super cute, but he looks really pouty. <laughs> he's, not, he's a grumpy little baby beagle on Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, now I'm taking ochre and some burnt sienna to get those nice browns that a lot of them have in their eye. And we go back with the black, layer that up. Yeah, it's looking better so far. And we'll just take a little dab of pure white and do a little highlight. And 
I just had a really cute idea to give him a bow tie. So I'm gonna do that real quick. <laughs> uh, for the bow tie, I'm just gonna mix black with my quad magenta. Before I paint this in, I wanted to get the bow tie on and it's just gonna go like right here and right there. So cute. Okay, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna fill this in. And if you don't want a bow tie, then you don't have to do a bow tie. <laughs> but I thought it would be cute. So the center part of the bow tie just goes like a little bit down and a little bit to the right of his nose and the rest comes about to the ears. I'm going to mix in some light magenta and white and a little bit of light ultramarine to get my little highlights coming out from center and we'll mix in more black and quad magenta and a little bit of purple for the shadows Gonna work on the body. I'm gonna use my angled brush to work on the body here. We've got white. I'm gonna go back to the face uh, at the end, I think, and adjust some features. All right, so I've got light ultramarine blue with some umber. I'm gonna do a little bit of ochre in there too. And a tiny bit of purple to mute down that ochre. Okay, and you want to go right up to your bow. You don't want to get too much of that color. If you get that color on your brush, if you get that color on your brush, then just wipe it down. And I'm gonna mix in a little bit more black. And Naples for this area down here. Even more Naples. And we're gonna mix a little more purple in with the Naples. And that's good for down here, the belly. It's a little bit more white in the spots. This has got a little more white. And we've got a lot more white on the paws and a little bit of Naples. So I'm just taking the brush and trying to thickly apply this 
paint. Now I'll take just some pure white, just highlight this nicely to separate it. You can build up a highlight over here too. And by going ba uh, back and forth with little movements like this with the brush, not pressing too hard, you can help create that textured fur appearance. And I'm going to mix a little bit of umber and sienna into my white because the paws have a little bit of brown in them. And let's see, white, mix a little bit. Just look at all the spots where there's white fur right now. I'm trying to get those all in here. And all right, now I'm gonna get this spot. And I'm gonna mix in a little bit of black. And brown and light ultramarine to get shadows and more brown and black over here because it's pretty dark A little bit of sienna. And we're gonna mix brown and black and ultramarine with the white that was on our brush. And that's gonna help us down here. There's a little bit of magenta too. building up the depth, giving him some dimension. And we've got our brownish floor color in here. Missed that earlier. Okay, a little bit more of the white for that paw. Okay, that's looking nice. Now I'm gonna take some black, mixing it in with that color I used for the bow tie. And I'm gonna mix some umber in here. and a little bit of Naples right here and we want this to have a little bit of the textured look so I'm very gently pressing and picking the brush up to give it that look Same thing here, just make some brush strokes and that'll give you that textured look. And 
little bit more Umber and Naples for over here. And now I'm going to put this brush back and get my smaller number two brush back out. We're going to use that for these little smaller details. So I'm going to take some of my white mixed with the grayish colors and put this in here. Being careful around the bow tie area. And it's pretty dark right here. I'm going to do a little highlight here to separate the mouth. And then I'm going to darken this area. And that should also help to separate things a little bit. Just adding a little bit more brown right around the mouth area. Okay. I'm going to take some light magenta, mix with a little bit of ochre, and he's got his little paw pads visible there. I'm going to take some umber and black, get our little puppy finger spots, paw <laughs> marks. And mix in a little bit more of our darker white, like our grayish white. Put that here. I'm going to take some pure white and lighten up these areas right there. And then give them some little claws. These are more bright white for those. And I'm going to take some brown with my magenta to darken these paw pads at the bottom so it looks a little bit more realistic and I'm just going to take black underline this section Okay, that looks cute. Just putting a shadow on the little claws there too, so we can see them a little better. He's got a little crease in his ankle or it's bending.
Okay. Let's kind of darken this down here a little more. I think I'm going to make this angle a little bit less intense for the paw. Putting a little bit of uh, highlights in there. And I'm going to take some white, blue, and brown and just create this little oops. Little line here for his arm. And this kind of fuzzes out into the rest of the body there. I can get a little bit more of my light ultramarine. And I'm going to add a shadow under. I'm going to mix a little bit of black in there too. And I'm going to add a shadow under the bow tie. And I'm fuzzing this edge too because this is on his fur, so we don't want to keep that too sharp of a line. All right, mixing brown and black, getting a little bit in here. Still a little bit of magenta and ochre too. More white, ultramarine. And I'm just gonna outline this paw too with a little bit more shadow on this side. This little shadow there and this little pause black and purples mixed together here. And I'm going to make this arm just a little bit wider. There we go. I'm going to put in these little paws. He's got his little thumb there. And these ones in the back, which 
aren't really a big focus. I'm gonna darken that too a little bit more. Okay. Cute. All right, I'm gonna go back to the face real quick. We've got a highlight. I'm gonna use ochre, cad deep, and our primary magenta and some whites and some naples and some bird sienna a little more bird sienna and let's see oh it needs to be brighter than that it's going to mix in more white and sienna and every time i go to put it down i'm like oh it's too dark still all right more white and we're just going to go right here. We've got a little bit of the highlight. And same right here. Also got a little highlight here, right here, the snout, side of the mouth part, and there. Gonna mix in more burnt sienna, and just kind of blend these a little bit. Soften those up a little. I'm going to take burnt sienna, put that here to help shape those eyebrows a little more. And take some umber, put this right here. And we're gonna take our black and purple color, get that back in the spot, get those droopy eyes. And I'm gonna fix this white came down just a little too, came up a little too high. So the shape of the eye really does a lot to your painting. And also add that nice color back into the eye there. Okay, and I'm gonna take some more Naples, put in some brush strokes here, just making uh, them basically all come out from the center of its head. You don't want to cover everything. I'm not pressing very hard here. Just want to get a little bit of coverage. Uh, and I'm, now I'm just going to take the extra paint off my brush and go back and forth and kind of fuzz it in a little. And we're going to use more burnt sienna to work on the ears some more. Take my lighter sienna color for the base of the ears. And I'm actually I want to incorporate some of this color into the parts of the coat down here. Let's 
So cute. And we're gonna take more black and umber, a little bit of purple mixed in there. Just gonna build up some of these darker shadows. here and we do pure quad magenta with our sienna for right here And over there, starting out with a darker color. And then uh, let's take a little bit more white, black, and ochre. Just get a little bit of a shadow right in here. Where his paws kind of bend. Gonna put a little bit of that in the sides there too. Take more white. Building up my highlights again. And I'm gonna build up a few more highlights with white and just a tiny hint of Naples. Take a little bit more of our shadows, a little bit more black for right down at the base of the paws. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit more white, get the little claws back in there. I'm gonna do one more little highlight, adding a bit of purple to the nose. All right, and that's gonna be it for the beagle for now. That's gonna wrap up part one. We're gonna do part two next, which will be the flowers and the basket and any final touches that we need. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed part one of this Valentine's Day inspired painting tutorial. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoyed this. That helps me out a lot and I appreciate it. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.